Man, oh man, coming up next, a song story that has so many twists, and so many turns, you will not believe it. First of all, this song was recorded several times and it wasn't a hit. Well, the third time was definitely the charm because it hit number one, but it's only because a DJ randomly heard the song while he was shopping. And the next day he played it on his show and the song just blew up. Phone lines lit up all across, it spread like wildfire. And then decades later, a dancing baby of all things revitalized the song. Then a few years after that, in fact, 40 years after it hit number one, it sold a million copies. That's because it was used in a blockbuster film. Find out the definitive story of a true classic next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you feel like a kid in a candy store, you know, whenever you see your favorite band or artist live for the up team time, you're gonna dig this channel. Make sure that you subscribe below right now. It's nostalgia all the time. We also have a Patreon that you're gonna wanna check out. This is where you get other content. You can also become an honorary producer. It really help us curate this music history, this project. Deep inside of me. Hooked on a feeling. One of the greatest uh, mood-altering, feel-good songs of the entire rock era. That great chant, that, that great intro, at least from uh, the band Blue Swede's 1974 version of Hooked on a Feeling, it's undeniable. Undeniable. I mean, one could even call it pop manipulation. The chanting was so instantly addicting. It's almost unfair for us mortals to deny. What you may not know is there was actually an earlier version of Hooked on a Feeling by Jonathan King. And that was the first that actually featured that tribal chanting intro. We're going to talk about the controversial Jonathan King for sure. But first, let's get into the original version of Hooked on a Feeling composed by Nashville Hall of Fame songwriter Mark James and also performed by the great B.J. Thomas. That happened in 1968. The original had a perpetual charm of its own. Billy Joe Thomas, who everyone called B.J., he was born in Oklahoma and he moved to Houston, Texas when he was just a little tyke. Uh, he learned to sing those good old gospel songs in the church choir as a teenager. And then he joined a band named The Triumphs that uh, became Thomas and The Triumphs. As a solo artist, Thomas scored big in 1966 with a cover of Hank Williams' Immortal, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. Uh, the Hank remake with BJ delivering a highly acclaimed lead vocal. That was a gold single, sold over a million copies. Seemed like B.J. Thomas was going to soar into stardom, but his next 10 singles fell to rise higher than number 80 on the Billboard Hot 100. 1968, that was a career-saving year for B.J. Thomas. All he really needed was the right batch of songs. His old friend, lyricist Mark James, convinced him to move to Memphis to work with producer Chips Moman. A Moman and his Memphis boys were starting to make things happen at American Studios. And uh, James was handpicked by Moman to, to be a head writer for this particular studio. James was on the verge of a tremendous breakout of success when he began to collaborate with B.J. Thomas. Uh, and the alliance it was magical from the outset. Thomas' solo LP, On My Way, produced by Chips Moman, it featured several songs by Mark James composed specifically for B.J. to record. James's Eyes of a New York Woman, that was the first single from On My Way. And the song put B.J. back in the top 40. He reached uh, actually number 28 on the Billboard Hot 100. Then it came to the second single, another Mark James Dandy, titled Hooked on a Feeling. I, I'm hooked on a feeling. Now the original recording of Hooked on a Feeling, it kicks off with a dose of psychedelic candy with Reggie Young's blissful electric sitar riff. <music> Reggie Young was a coveted studio musician back then. Uh, over a career that spanned over 60 years, Young performed on more than 100 songs that actually made it on the Billboard pop chart. In addition to Reggie's catchy sitar opening, he performed the sitar solo in the outro on BJ's Hooked on a Feeling. Of course, in the late 60s, the sitar became fashionable in the 
the music of some of rock's biggest bands. There was the Beatles, who incorporated in their beloved track, Norwegian Wood. Which, of course, historians call the first rock song to feature a sitar, and uh, With You, Without You, as well. The sitar was also a permeating instrument in Paint It Black and Street Fighting Man, uh, among other selections by the Rolling Stones. But during that period of the 60s, the sitar was uh, frequently used in psychedelic pop hits, such as It's a Turn Down Day by the, the Circle, and there was a Green Tambourine by the Lemon Pipers. Crazy song, I loved it. Just dropped in to see what condition my condition is in. That was by Kenny Rogers in the first edition. And uh, the Flower Child Anthem, San Francisco by Scott McKenzie. Another great song. Now, James spawned the inspiration to write Hooked on a Feeling while reminiscing about a childhood sweetheart, apparently. He remembered the exuberance of young love something that uh, you ache to rekindle later in life. Uh, James described his feelings of joy by comparing his euphoria to the effects of drugs, which, of course, was a, another fashionable topic during the late 60s. I'm hooked on a feeling, and I'm high on believing. That's in the chorus, of course. And, I'm and in the verse, I got a bad for you, girl, but I don't need a cure. I just stay addicted and hope I can endure. Girl, I don't need a cure. Mark James soon became one of the music industry's hottest writers. He gave Elvis Presley his last number one hit with his composition, Suspicious Minds. Among many other notable songs, James also blessed Elvis again by co-writing Always On My Mind which has been recorded with tremendous success by so many artists, including The King. You were always on my mind. There was the Grammy-winning version in 82 by uh, the red-headed stranger, Willie Nelson. You were always on my mind. And of course, uh, Pet Shop Boys had an incredible version as well. So as we further break down this classic hit, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I always jam every day. Make sure to step into a new style this summer with Zenny's prescription glasses. You can get sunglasses as well. Go to zenny.com today uh, to design your own pair. You can add amazing features like anti-fog, anti-glare, and blue blocks. I just Meanwhile, B.J. Thomas became a superstar with the success of Hooked on a Feeling when the single shot to uh, number five on the Billboard Hot 168 and it set him up for huge accolades a year later with the chart-topping international smash, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, which of course won the, the Oscar. Raindrops are falling on my head. But it was the Blue Swede version. Uh, Blue Sweet, who had the biggest hit with Hooked on a Feeling, and the one that every generation knows by heart due to its renaissance in uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Now, before we tell you how Blue Sweet took it to another level, let's get B.J. Thomas's take on, on Hooked on a Feeling. I think my version uh, is, uh, is distinctive, just uh, not so much for my vocal, but because of the sitar uh, instrumental that Reggie Young Played. Reggie Young was with the American Studio Group, and he played on everything. All the Elvis comeback stuff, and he was a, the, the best guitar player. It is the best guitar player uh, of all time to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's, that's the reason I kind of I kind of like mine. But, of course, the Ooga Chugga thing uh, was a great production idea. It never bothered me. Uh, I, do, I wasn't the writer of the song. Mark James was the writer. Mark has three, yeah, Suspicious Minds, and uh, you were always on my mind. So he had three songs in the in the uh, the top 100 songs of all time. And I'm going in uh, in November, early November, going in and singing Hooked on a Feeling. He's being inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. So. Oh, wow. And he's a wonderful guy, and uh, we were buddies from Houston. But Hooked on a Feeling, uh, we had used the, the, the sitar a little bit on the eyes of a New York woman. And uh, Chip, Chip's moment had brought the, brought the instrument into the studio. 
And uh, uh, and I think it was, you know, the Beatles were using it, of course, and Gamble and Huff were using it in Philadelphia. And uh, so he, he was ready to do it. So uh, when we did hook, the, he used it a little bit in New York, and then we and then he really made Reggie reach deep for this 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 ride. And it took him a while, but he did finally get this incredible uh, uh, sitar ride. And and uh, and uh, believe it or not, that was probably the hardest record I've ever had out to to get going. And nobody yeah. would play it. They didn't hear the sitar like that before. They you know they there was a certain resistance to it. And uh, it did finally break, uh, break out of Houston. And uh, it's probably, you know, I probably could live without raindrops. I'm so glad I, I don't have to. And I'm probably, that's a dumb thing to say. <laughs> but, but Hooked on a Feeling is probably the one. It, people react to that more in yeah. my show than any song I do. So I'm, I'm so glad I, I did that. Of course, uh, you know, I'm watching the Galaxy movie. Yeah, and Uga Chan comes on. And, I, you know, I wanted to call Mark and go, hey, man. Well, uh, you know, but uh, I was I was thinking, man, where's that sitar? But uh, uh, but uh, you know, and of course, Mark uh, Mark has made a he's been a big part of my life, and uh, I have a lot of I've been lucky. I've had a lot of good friends that that, that remained uh, that remained friends of mine even through my times uh, when uh, you know I was I, I wasn't easy. You know, that's what my uh, that's what Gloria will always tell me. You know, BJ, you're not easy. <laughs> and, and I said, you know, I'm sorry. I wish I'd have been easier, but but you know, that's just the way. That's yeah. the way it goes. And I've been a very lucky, uh, fortunate guy. Three years later, in 1971, British singer, musician, and producer Jonathan King reinterpreted "Hooked on a Feeling," kicking his version off with a Uga Chaka jungle chant and adding what Jonathan King described as a reggae rhythm by Mel Voices. Uga, uga, I can't stop uga, this uga, feeling. Uga, uga, uga. King borrowed the idea of a chant for the intro of his remake of Hooked on a Feeling from Johnny Preston's tune about a teenage tragedy titled Running Bear. That hit number one all the way back in 1959. Running Bear was written by the Big Bopper, J.P. Richardson, and uh, the Indian war cries throughout Preston's recording were delivered by producer Bill Hall and country music legend George Jones, who just happened to be passing by the studio during the recording session for the track. The running bear, love little white dog. For sadly, the big bopper along with Richie Valens and Buddy Holly uh, were part of the day the music died in that horrible plane crash. But Jonathan King's version of Hooked on a Feeling, that performed well in his native country. It peaked at number 23 on the UK singles chart. That was in November of 71. And it ended up being the only version of Hooked on a Feeling to crack the British chart. The story of Jonathan King is a strange one, full of the fantastic and the bizarre for that matter. He was a very impactful yet eccentric entrepreneur in the music business for decades. But his legacy was permanently tarnished when he was charged and convicted of a series of felonies at the turn of the century. Jonathan King's professional career broke while he was still in college. He was a student when his debut single was a number four novelty hit in the UK. Also went to uh, number 17 here on the Billboard Hot 100. Everyone's gone to the moon. Now in early 67, King attended a school reunion and one of his former classmates handed him a cassette tape of a band that called themselves Anna, consisting of unknown 15 to 17 year olds, Peter Gabriel, Tony Banks, Anthony Phillips, Chris Stewart, and Mike Rutherford. Yeah, it was the dawning of the supergroup we know now as Genesis. King not only discovered Genesis from that raw demo, he came up with their name and produced their first album from Genesis to Revelation that was in 69. King and Genesis parted company in 70, and King turned his attention to starting his own record label and producing. His good fortune turned to infamy, though, in 2000 when he was accused of sexually assaulting underage boys with charges dating all the way back to 1970. Uh, King was charged with seven counts of assault against a minor and sentenced to seven years in prison. Uh, he was paroled for good behavior in 2005. All right, <laughs> let's go back to happier times, circa 1974 in Stockholm, Sweden. One of the most popular singers in Sweden during those days was Bjorn Hwifs. Uh, 1973, Hwifs put together an all-Swede ensemble that was intended to be a support group for his live concerts, with Hwifs uh, performing lead vocals, actually. 
Uh, the group was originally named Blaubus. Uh, this was Swedish for Blue Blouse, but they quickly changed their moniker to Blue Swede. Now, Blue Swede recorded a collection of covers, including a great rendition of Hooked on a Feeling that was really a combination of B.J. Thomas's Golden Original and then Jonathan King's Jungle Chanting reboot. Whiffs and the band also softened the Mark James original lyrics to get rid of uh, alleged uh, drug references that were in the song. Uh, the original lyric, I got it bad for your girl, but I don't need a cure. Uh, I'll just stay addicted and hope I can endure. That was changed to got a bug from your girl, but I don't need no cure. I just stay a victim if I can for sure. Bug from you, girl, but I don't need EMI. Sweden released Blue Swedes Hooked on a Feeling. Uh, it was a single in uh, February of 74. Actually, only a few 45s landed in the US. Virtually nothing, nothing was happening with the song. That is until a DJ in Connecticut heard the song over the stereo system at a local record store of all places, and he began playing it on his radio show. Blue Swedes version went from the you know, who cares file to becoming a regional hit in Northeast America. And then it took the nation by storm going to number one, all the way to number one on the charts. It actually became the 20th biggest song in 1974 uh, on the year end countdown. It would become even bigger over time. So originally when Hooked on a Feeling blew up, Blue Swede's label put out an album of the same name. And they followed Hooked on a Feeling with an up-tempo interpretation of the association's Never My Love. And that went to number seven in the U.S., uh, also went to number seven in Canada. But that was it for Blue Sweet. The band dropped seven singles after Never My Love went to number seven, and uh, they all stiffed, even in Sweden. Like other classic hits, uh, including Don't Stop Believing" by Journey and Africa by Toto, Blue Swede's version of Hooked on a Feeling would have a major renaissance thanks to pop culture. Starting in 1992, it was featured on the soundtrack of Quentin Tarantino's debut feature, uh, Reservoir Dogs. And then it really got a push when in a 1998 episode of uh, Ally McBeal, uh, when Crow Magan, who was the main character of Callista Flockhart's neurosis about the ability to have a baby before her biological clock runs out is demonstrated by her uh, imagining a computer-generated baby dancing in her bedroom with Blue Swede's chant playing. It became widespread after that. It was an internet meme that, uh, of course, made it even more popular. In your arms so tight, you let me know. The pinnacle for this song, uh, the feel-good power of Hooked on a Feeling and the infectious Uga Chaka Uga chant, that was at full strength in the 2014 movie, The Blockbuster Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, of course, in the movie, the lead character played by Chris Pratt, carries a Walkman with a cassette tape of 70s pop super hits uh, that his mom made especially for him. Uh, the tape was dubbed Awesome Mix Volume 1. And during a pivotal scene, the Walkman is impounded. When a prison guard begins to listen to Hooked on a Feeling on the cassette, Pratt's character gets in the guard's face to, to get his Walkman back. And that player is mine! Pratt's character is zapped by a taser, but he remains defiant, yelling at the guard. Hooked on a feeling, Blue Sweet, 1973, that song belongs to me. Hooked on a feeling, Blue Sweet, 1973, that song belongs to me. And don't we all feel that a lot of the time? But a certain song belongs to us and us alone. Hooked on a feeling was featured in the Guardians trailers and the movie, of which, of course, pushed the song to a whole new generation to the point where my two little boys, who were four and six at that time, were, were singing it nonstop. It was awesome. This caused a spike in the song's popularity, and the Guardian soundtrack hit number one on the Billboard charts. It was the first soundtrack to hit number one that didn't contain any new songs. It's also the biggest selling album of that year. Then it was featured heavily in the teaser trailer for the 2017 sequel, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, it's at almost 700 million views and streams since then, making it one of the biggest since it hit number one in the 70s. 
Uh, Mark James is hooked on a feeling with all of its wonderful spin-offs. Eh, it's a proverbial one listen pop classic. B.J. Thomas's velvety rich vocals and the catchy, heartwarming chorus it launched the song's glorious legacy. But it was the ingenious insertion of the tribal chant in subsequent versions of Hooked on a Feeling that really fascinated new generations of fans to the song's confectious mind control. I think I actually just made that word up. <laughs> Once you hear Hooked on a Feeling, though, in any form, you're indeed hooked on the song for life. Leave us a comment about this all-time 70s classic. What is your, your favorite iteration? What are your memories? What are your feelings about the songs? Uh, or about this, all, all versions of the songs, really. Let us know in the comments below. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe. Make sure to check out uh, more content on Patreon. Uh, help us keep the music alive. That's always the idea. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.